Hello out there, Nisha M official. This is Nisha M, your geek mom, coming to you from Diversely Geek. And My name is Lewis, and I'm coming from Man Bites Media. And we are going to give you our feedback on... Well, I think maybe our faces might tell you how we feel about the film. You mean um, your face is telling you. Yeah, my face is insane. Yeah, 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 Mr. The... So I'm the expressive one, right? He's the now. <laughs> um, listen, I um, went into the movie expecting to not, not like it, but I'm really not a horror genre fan, whereas... I am a massive, massive. horror fan. So we're at the two sides of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm more seasoned now and I'm seeing, I'm, I'm, I have a different viewing perspective. But I did go into it with a, with my background, which most of you know is huge science room. Lots of um, psych and psychological and... Um, I approached and, it with the filmmaking aspect of it. Yeah, and I approached it from the, the of course, the psych side of it and everything. So, um, I really liked the film. I liked it a lot more than I thought that I was going to. But it had me thinking quite a bit. I was doing a lot of, hmm. <laughs> so. I found myself doing that too. And honestly, this is probably one of the best films I've seen in the last probably at least a year and I'm saying that because it hasn't sunk in yet. Yeah. It's one of those movies that I want to watch this, let it fester for at least a week or two and then go back and watch it again because it's that type of intensity that you see in a uh, Lars von Trier film, that you see in a Jaron Aronofsky film, that you have to peel back the multiple layers of the film and this film has that. You see the psychological aspect in it right from the beginning. Yes. It messes with your mind right from the, the color scheme, right in the first shot of the film. The sound design is just amazing Incredible. because it develops little by little by little and you get enveloped into this world that is Mandy. I, I, oh. I have a very, uh, by the end of the film, I am I am left questioning whether or not what I what I saw was someone's dream. Yeah. Um, whether or not fever dream, um, right? Mandy had herself. Uh, we were in an experience that she was having as a fever dream, uh, and I've never obviously I've never experienced it. I've certainly seen it from the medical point of view. I do know what it is for someone to be uh, having a psychotic or a manic episode. And there was a, a lot of reminiscences of, wow, is this what that person is experiencing? Are they in an altered state of being? Now, my approach to it was the opposite. It was, uh, what do you call it, Nicolas Cage's character, and he's having the fever dream post-stress uh, from Mandy dying. That scar on her face never answered. Where did she get that scar? Get that scar? How, how did it happen? And maybe his dream and his uh, hallucinations of him just trying to, to alter his mind because he doesn't want to face the reality of not having Mandy. Something. Did you notice that, and uh, no spoilers of course, but did you notice that scar was a running theme? So I'm just not going to say any more about it, but that, that it just manifests just so yeah. blithely is so interesting because actually throughout the film, um, I had said in one of our earlier um, feedback Q and A's that I, I felt that there were three running running plot lines, oh, big that time, yeah. unspoken plot lines, and one you and I agree, of course, is the sound oh. sound design. The second is color and the ambiance of the color and the circumstance you of the, the color colors. use. The and reds, the blues, yes. during moments of calm, no, moments where you're supposed to feel the serenity that he's feeling. And this is why I think that it's Nicolas Cage's dream rather than Mandy's, yeah. because it's his emotion towards her. And it's her, the one that's enveloped in blue. So are we lucid so. dreaming or not? And, and and where where that comes in, the third plot point for me, as I said, was the silence. Yes. Because the silence, um, speaks volumes about the lucidity versus the, uh, the whether or not we're in a manic, uh, a manic episode or a manic state, or whether or not we are now in a interdimensional, you know, rabbit hole. 
Yeah. Um, and you, you know what I'm saying about yeah. that. No, there, there's scenes right before the breakdown in the in the bathroom, which is one of the most climactic scenes of just pure rage of Nicolas Cage. And it's and everybody that ever wanted to watch this movie just for Nicolas Cage losing his, you know what? That's the scene that you're going to wait for and expect because you're going to see him do it the way that you expect him. And he did it in a way, though, that was true to the film, which he has not done that in a very long time. Correct. And that moment of silence right before that scene happens. Right. He builds that scene and it just, it's silence, 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 and then boom. It's the explosion of red, like a volcano. I mean, again, looking at it from a psychological, emotional, and a mental point of view, we're looking at grief and loss. Oh, yeah, 100%. But grief and loss with this absolute, this absolute resolution. Um, again, no spoilers. You won't explain that any further, but you will understand once you've seen the film. Yes. That yes. scene is worthy of accolades. I think it's going to be everyone's most moving most connective, most empathetic moments? Correct. What do you think? A hundred percent. This this is the year of horror. Um, this is where we've seen horror films not only trans, uh, transcend the regular just B-rate film, we've actually seen that develop a hundred percent. And this is the epitome of the, the great summer that we've had for horror. Yeah. Mandy literally has taken it to the next step. And this year we've been seeing some great horror performances and everybody that writes off Nicolas Cage as a running meme joke online you can't do that you after can't this do now. this after this this is where you see the true epiphany that 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 is Nicolas Cage and I personally love Nicolas Cage performances this is in the top three for me well I feel that he um, poignant silence for a moment I feel that he embodies the character as if he was living the experience. Yes. Uh, what would it be if Nicolas Cage was losing Mandy? And not just Mandy, but his his exactly. world. He, yeah, yeah, just his existence, his safety. Uh, I want to go his, into that final scene. We can't. We can't. can't. Because you give away so much. Yeah. You, mean, like, you just gotta watch. In the car at yes. The end? I, you can't. You just can't. This has right. aspects that you want to unfold and you want to delve deeper into. It's like I said before. It's an onion. You go. You cow. Uh, you pierce through an onion, but you're gonna yeah. see so many different layers in there. Right. That's what this film does. It's not one layer. It's not two layers. It's multiple layers, and every single one gives you a little bit more towards the final story and then when you get to the core of that onion that's where you see the true story that is this movie and i would love to go into spoilers on the the podcast um on another day when the the time comes one of the points that i want to make and as i watch the film the character i felt that had the most depth and while it is Nicolas cage's character red (laughs) yeah i mean even the fact that he that name exists is there's a reason um, is, is this actress here? Yeah, and she did her eyes, her eyes. said it all. Like her, she didn't have to speak. It's <laughs> oh incredible. God. It was eyes. incredible. Um, that scene when they're lying on the ground facing each other and you see the reflection of each other. Yeah. That, I, I you truly really saw the next level on this when you saw that. I think that that was the turning moment in the entire film is when we moved into a different um, paradigmal shift yeah. in terms of emotional and mental sanity. Yes. Um, and what happens to a person when they're traumatized? What happens to a person's uh, physical existence, the mental state, in the moment that they experience a trauma that is so confounding that they now become an alternate personality. Yep. So it's something that you'll understand again as you see it, yeah. and it will make a lot of sense to you. But to be fair, you have not just grief and loss, but the PTSD is immediately oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. built 
and it starts in that scene right in the in the bathroom scene that's the catalyst for the rest of the movie watch a lot of people are going to walk out of this movie because they don't understand what is going on and that is very unfortunate because the experience starts from that bathroom scene that's where you see the full development of the character development of the story and this is where it takes off and then launches to a different hemisphere and a lot of people will walk out before that scene but also another disclaimer i want to put out there this is not all horror this has its comedic aspects it has its moments that it breaks that tension it breaks away that that like horrific scenes that we're seeing because I, that's the only way we can uh, I even think appreciate that there are moments where they break the fifth wall but they do it in such a very a refreshing way yeah. that as a non-horror <laughs> genre person I'm actually able to stay engaged yeah. and actively interested in understanding what the next uh, moment is going to bring to me so also every character is not wasted every single one this time I, I just yeah. cannot yeah. I these actors, the entirety and actresses. of these actors, well, actors is a, a term for both, because we don't always, yeah, it's a, across the, the gender spectrum. Um, they, they, jeez, I mean, yeah. they have almost, they almost say nothing. Yeah, there's scenes, there's an actress in particular, one actress, that I think she has maybe two or three lines of dialogue but her emotion on her face says everything and she's one of the most poignant characters because she does something that most of the other characters don't see and I think that is super impactful and that character as minute of a character it is it's developed and it has a characteristic and it, it does so much um, I think again, nobody's a filler. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone has I agree a with you 100% on that. Everyone yeah. has a, a, a purpose and a meaning, and everyone has a connection point to the viewing audience. So, with um, Gecko Lewis being the horror genre expert and me not being it, and having both of us agree so wholeheartedly yeah. on the social and, and the emotional impact. Yeah. Of this, of the film, and the quality, the caliber of this film. Yeah. Honestly, uh, um, I will say we cannot even discuss the social impact because yeah. that would be spoilers. Yeah. But later on, we, we will, uh, we will have to, because the 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 generation and the setting was extremely indelible to the to the cultural shift in our country. Yes. And um, and knowing that, having watched it, uh, we understand. Yeah. Um, 100%. What it's, 100%. What it's referencing. And you will too once you've seen it. I, I, do, re I, I do recommend that a non um, horror genre person certainly um, do the best that you can to attend the movie. Um, give it a watch, even though it doesn't look like something you watch. Because I feel that there's some um, um, social and um, emotional relevance to you as a person. And, and, and if you don't, I mean, just give it a try. There's nothing, no harm in it. And of course, if you don't want to put it out to see in the films, of course, it's going to come out in DVD one day, and there's always an option there. But, before but, you go there, like we said, this is a major theater experience. This is something yeah. that you will enjoy. The sound, the sound quality in particular. Yeah. The sound quality in this film is riveting. And it literally, like, shakes you to your bone. Yeah. And if you don't enjoy that in a movie theater that's playing it the correct way, the, the visuals, yes, you want to watch it in the theater, but you can kind of appreciate that in a, in a home setting. But the sound, Honestly, the unless sound. you have a, an extraordinary sound system, you would not pick up the little nuances that this film does with the sound. And the score is, bar none, one of my favorite scores in the last three or four years. It's it's phenomenal. Yeah, it really is. Um, so honestly, it's eerie. yeah, <laughs> yeah. From the moment you start, yeah, it's, it, it's extremely eerie. Uh, honestly, I give this probably a probably a nine point five out of ten for me. Yeah. Um, we are very lucky that we're getting the opportunity to score on Rotten Tomatoes having yeah. um, gotten to do the pre-screening and 
I'm not sure how to score yet. My, my brain really has to bring myself through it. I would probably stay in the uh, 8.7 to 9 spectrum myself. Yeah. Um, I tend to score a little harder. I'm so sorry, guys. But, uh, but, but uh, uh, you know, I'm, really I'm extremely critical about what, rating my movies. He is. And he is like, so hard is. on everything. So, yeah. Um, this is right up my alley. Not only is it right up my alley, it's it's an enjoyable film, and I see the value in other people oh, enjoying this I, film I, I because this is something that yeah. it's not just a horror movie. It's not just violent to be no, it's violent. A thriller at the Correct. Same time. So you know we're we're straddling that. Correct. Too, so. And to the extent of even Silence of the Lambs, which has that poignant psychological aspect to it, and you see that in this. It now it's done in a very horrific manner that is typical to psychedelic horror films, but it goes into the psychological aspect, which is very different because they don't usually go into that in the psychedelic horror films. So this it, it's on its own. It's something out of the ordinary. It's yeah. something completely unique, and this is this is going to set the bar honestly for horror films. I actually think so. It's going to set the bar. Um very much so in terms of what SpectraVision brought to us yes. um, and what Legion M is supporting. Uh, um, as a Legion M member, I can completely understand their their choice to support this film and to be part of the production. Yeah. And then um, and Elijah Wood's decision to actually support us as well. He spoke to us about Mandy at the uh, panel at, Ma at MegaCon Orlando oh, this really? year. Yeah. And I didn't realize that he was referencing this and why. So I do have some sound bites as to why he chose to support this as a, nice. as a producer, and now I can understand where he's coming from. Yeah. So this is not just a horror. Film. Yeah, no, not it's at all. Not. And I, so, do, I'm playing it back in my head as yeah. I'm, I'm talking to you. Um, so if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. It's released uh, today, Thursday, um, but you're able to watch it all any theater out there right now and it's it's definitely something that you want to go out and watch because it yeah. is phenomenal yeah no i am actually gonna see it again yeah. because we've been already requested to host the second meetup for legion and official um nice. by the fans who attended our first one tonight yeah. can you imagine what does that tell you um so that'll be going up pretty soon on the diversity geek um events page Guys, anyone who would like to join us for the second meetup, please absolutely get on the page and know that you'll also be part of our feedback um, that goes to Legion and Official and to the production, the casting crew. Yep. And um, I, we welcome you being part of our, our journey with yep. Legion and, um, and welcome to the movie experience, I guess, yep. huh? Yep. And I that's right. I, Honestly, I just came back from vacation and I just we just drove five hours and we came straight to the premiere and I don't regret it for a moment. It is I literally sat in the car for five six hours and now I'm sitting for another two hours. I was very skeptical about coming and I am so glad Nisha pushed me to come and like you gotta come here, you gotta come. You gotta come. She, she was that mom that dragged me <laughs> to the show, you know, and I'm so appreciative of it. Yeah, because. relevant, culturally relevant, and diverse conversation that we're sharing with the world, a different view on film and cinematography and sound, yes. as we've said many yes. times, and, um, and visual perspectives from, um, from an empathetic, compassionate, um, e e even from um, an emotion, the emotional spectrums, and, and getting people to understand how to connect and embrace why they connect to something. And, this for me is my um, stepping out of my box. Yeah, yeah, um, big time for her. To, yes, very much so. Bad Samaritan was our first, yeah. and then this is our, my second. And and saying, hey, I need to be able to see the world from someone else's eyes and really um, be able to um, glean what I can from what they're they're sharing with me. So Correct. you know, this is your opportunity to do the same. We highly recommend with. Every thumb we have, every finger, Seriously. Um, to see the film as soon as you can, while it's in limited screenings, I believe. Correct. And join one of our meetups. Um, and 
Yeah. Uh, just check us out on Man Bites Media, Man Bites Film. Uh, you can just hashtag it anywhere and you'll be able to find us. Um, we're both on YouTube and any podcast, wherever you get any uh, form of podcast, you'll be able to find us on there. Right. And check us out, Diversely Geek. Um, our YouTube show is Diversely Geek dis- uh, Discusses. And we also have our Diversely Geek Discusses podcast that we'll be sharing with Man, Man Bites Media as we post those discussions yeah. we just yeah. we just um, talked about. And we bring you this type of perspective on Perfect. what the diverse geek world has to offer you guys. So, as always, from Diversely Geek, we love and you. And Man Bites Media. And have a great week.